Good morning, Smoke Meat Nation. How are you? I'm your host, Brad Pittman. Welcome to the Small Bites here on the Smoke Meat Podcast. A uh, little something on my mind this morning. It's coming up on a, a very important anniversary to me. It's a strange one to mark, but it is one that changed my life. Uh, August 19th of 2015. I, you know, of course, y'all know I'm a paramedic, been one for a long time was on an ambulance and I just, I didn't feel right. I just, we, we had finished a call in Augusta and we're standing outside talking to some people and I was just being a dick. I mean, huge, worse than normal, not even the playful type. Just saying mean things to get this guy that I normally love. And, you know, finally we got in the truck, head back to Augusta, head back to Thompson. And I just, I didn't feel good. I just felt tired and weak. So I checked my blood sugar because sometimes it'll change on me and it was really low. So I took a tube of instant glucose, which is basically like sugar paste. And that brought it up a little bit. And we got near doctor's hospital and I got my partner to turn off and I checked it again and it had gone down again. So I went into a convenience store and basically ate the store. I mean, I got honey buns, you name it, I got it. And it brought my sugar up really good. I was a little bit shaky, and it started coming back down again. And I started stuttering while talking to my partner. And he said, you need to call Jackie. You you need to let her know something's not right. I said, okay, I will. So I talked to my wife, and I still didn't realize how bad the stutter was. Not in my head. You know, so she, she asked to talk to my partner on the phone, and he talked to her. He said, yeah, we're right here. We're going. So I hung up, and he said, yeah, she said, you're going to the ER. I said, well, I think it's a pretty good idea. Let's go. So get to the ER. I, I start to get out of the truck. He says, nope, you're not moving. I'm going to get a chair. I'm like, great, whatever. Go get one. Got a wheelchair. He wheeled me in. They put me in a room. And a few minutes later, I heard the words, code stroke. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going to be here forever now. They're going to be dealing with that. And all of a sudden, the room was swarmed with nurses and docs. I'm like, oh, shit, that's me, really? And uh, that's that's when the real fear set in. Um, if you've never had one, I don't recommend it. You know, it's, it's one of the scariest things in the world to to know what you want to say or know what you want to get across, and you just can't. You know, inside everything's great. Outside, nothing's working right, and that's terrifying. You know, my wife came in. My friend Seth came in. And I had, I had people from work come in to, you know, my supervisors to check on me. And they, they put me in the hospital, did a CT and an MRI, and found out I had had one two weeks before. I didn't even know about it. It shows up in my brain near the left basal ganglia as a dark spot about the size of a quarter. Well, the second one was what they called a lacunar stroke, which is where all the blood vessels in my brain just basically contracted and cut off blood flow. Well, they were saying, okay, maybe a TIA, we'll see. And they put me in the hospital. And the symptoms just kept on being there. The stutter never went away. Uh, I cried a lot. I, I forgot a lot of things. I had so many holes in my memory. I couldn't even remember how to be a paramedic. And I've done that my entire adult life. You know, I would lose words. And it it was so frustrating. I hated everything during this. And, you know, all I could do was sit at home. I couldn't do anything, you know. I'd put her around. I mean, I was lucky. It didn't get me physically. Everything was in my head, but it didn't get me physically. I was so lucky. And, you know, I I was on Facebook some, and everybody was telling me, you know, and I'm I'm not very proud of this part of it, but it is a part of my story, so I'm going to tell it. And everybody told me, God has a plan. And I was raised in the church. I'm, I'm saved. I know where I'm going when I die. But during that time, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand the plan. You know, all I knew was, I'm not me. I can't do what I've always done. I can't help people. I can't even drive right now. What, what's going on, you know? And I got so sick of hearing about this plan. And I I just kind of shut off from a lot of people over that sentence. And me and God did a lot of talking. We did a lot of arguing. And 
Well, I did a lot of arguing. He just listened and just kind of sat there looking at me down from above and saying, there's a plan, shut up. There's a plan. You just need to shut up now. Just wait. And, you know, I, I feel so horrible that, that I argued with God because that's not me. And I finally sat back and, and realized, you know, well, got to be a plan. I had some very good friends that helped me through all this. Um, you know, Blake, we, we've got a friend who loves to hunt. He hunts deer and he's got a lot of hogs on his property. But he doesn't like wild meat, so when he hunts, he gives the meat away to somebody who's going to eat it. He doesn't waste it. And they would give all this meat to me and Blake. So we would clean the deer, clean the hogs, and we would process them. You know, this is when, when the smoked meat guy actually came into, into being. Because that's where I learned how to make sausages, where I learned how to make deer pastrami, things like that. Things that help get me through it. You know, these people right here by my side doing this with me. And it helped get me through it. And, you know, the stutter was so frustrating because I couldn't get rid of it at all. And I remember... I went outside one day and I, I decided I'm going to do some aromatherapy, which means I'm going to clean guns and smell gun solvent all morning. So we're going to do this. I went to my cook shack, which was kind of my safe space. And I had a big surround sound stereo system in it. Don't judge me. And I was listening to metal and cleaning my guns, doing fine. You know, and everybody had told me about Mel Tillis. Oh, man, he can, he can sing, but he can't talk. Try singing. And I had tried that, and it, yeah, it don't work. It just did not work for me. And my cousin had played me a song by a guy named Monty Montgomery. Anybody that doesn't know Monty Montgomery needs to look him up as soon as possible and listen to everything he's ever done. He is amazing on the guitar. He plays an acoustic electric Alvarez, and that's the only one he's played in his main career. And he is, he, it, it, one song he sounds like three people playing at the same time, and it's just him on stage. But he, he had a song called Romeo and Juliet, which was a remake of an old Dire Straits song. And the way he sings it, you know, I, I just wanted to hear it. Well, Jackie was outside walking. She was doing laps around the yard, walking around. You know, we had a really huge yard, eight and a half acres. And I'm cleaning my guns, listening to this song. And suddenly I realized I am singing with this song. I'm singing it perfectly. And I stopped, and I sang it again. And she started walking toward me, and I just started waving her over frantically, and I was crying. And she, she ran toward me, she's like, what's, what's wrong? I said, watch. And I played it again, and I sang it again, perfectly. And when, I was, when it was over, I, I, if I talk slow, I got to tell my wife one of the first clear I love you's I'd given her in a couple of months which was amazing I listened to this song and sang it probably 30 times that night and you know I, I sent him a message on Facebook you know I'm not the big fan boy who oh I love your movies and all this for everybody in the world but he needed, needed to know that made a difference with me and I sent him a message and told him the story and just for shits and giggles I said here's my number if you ever want to talk, I'm here. And a little while later, you know, the, actually the two days before my birthday, I'm laying there in the bed and my phone rings. And I'm like, great, somebody else wants money now. I look and it's from Texas. I'm like, I don't owe anybody in Texas. I don't have any bills from Texas, but let's see. So I pick up my phone and the guy says, hey, is, is this Brad? I said, yeah, because the stutter was gone because of that song. I had worked so hard on that. And I said, yeah, this is Brad. Who is this? It's just Monty Montgomery. And I'm like, well, I woke up really good then. I was like, well, okay. And uh, he said, you know, I got your message. He said, and it, it, it touched me. He said, I was going to send you a message back, but I just had to hear that voice. And it was so great because this guy who 
had nothing at all to gain by speaking to me, taking time out of his morning to call Lily Brad Pittman. Decided to get up that morning, have his coffee, and say, let's, let's call this dude. Let's talk to him. And we talked for about 20, 25 minutes, and it was just awesome, just two guys talking. And I'll never forget that because he, he understands his fans. He's, he's not ultra-famous guy who is too good to speak to anybody. He's ultra-famous guy who cares about the people that listen to him, and that, that'll always go a long way with me. And hopefully, if I ever get famous, I'm going to be the same way. I don't want to forget where I come from because you can't. But, you know, that, that was a time that changed my life. You know, it took me off of an ambulance, which I had done most of my adult life, uh, which was a very hard thing to get used to. You know, I worked in a couple of restaurants and I worked at a grocery store. Um, did not dig the grocery store at all. Loved the restaurants, but I was the new guy and it was hard to get a lot of time there, so. You know, had to pay the bills, so I wound up at an ER somewhere. Not going to say where. And, you know, we had moved, and I knew no one here. Not a soul. And when I got into this ER, everybody just opened their arms. I was family immediately. And it was so amazing. Because I'd never had that happen that fast. And now, when... The stutter comes back, or I have crying days, or I have rage days. You know, anything that happens with the stroke, they put up with it. They deal with it. They help me get through it. They work with me. And they understand. They watch me. They take care of me. And it's so great. It's such a big family. And I love every one of them because of this. You know, they're one of the reasons why I'm out here smoking butts this time of morning, because I'm taking some to work just because they put up with my bat shit well this is a little bit longer episode of the small bites than we usually get but it's a fairly serious one and it, it's a good one it's just a little bit of insight about me but I, I figured it you know I'll let y'all get to know a little bit about me in time but I appreciate y'all listening this has been the small bites they're brought to you by Joe's Underground 8th and Broad in Augusta Georgia great little club Always has good entertainment, good people, and good times. Thank you so much for listening to the Small Bites. I'm out.